Thank you for joining me for another episode of Screw the Cubicle TV, where we talk everything to do with your freedom-based mindset, including how you can live and work on your own terms. So we are coming up to the last few weeks of 2015. So um, you're probably busy stuffing your face <laughs> with all the culinary delights of um, Christmas dinners and all that. I do miss that a little bit in Bali. Um, and of course, I'm sure on a personal level, you're thinking a little bit about, wow, this is you know, coming up to next year and, and do I want my life to be a reflection of what has happened this year? Do I want to make any changes? Um, and you're starting to decide on what you want to achieve for next year. So goal planning and um, understanding what you need to do to get closer to your dreams for next year is probably been on your mind. So this episode is dedicated uh, for me to share with you all the tips that I can give uh, regarding how to determine uh, what types of goals to uh, create for yourself and how to get to those goals successfully without uh, losing your eyes on the prize. So the first thing is get specific on the outcomes that you want for your new year that's going to feel successful for you. When we get too vague about what we want, so something vague could sound like, I wanna quit my job. Okay, but there's a lot that happens before you are able to do that. What are those specific things that you need to get clear and focused on in order for that to happen? right so for example something more specific could sound like i want to be able to learn how to turn my best skills into a profitable business right that has a little bit more um, specificness to it and that way it will train yourself to start then looking for opportunities or looking for help regarding that specific outcome that you want and you can start attracting uh, more related people or learnings or education or research that's going to get you closer to solving that thing to bring you that outcome. And when you're able to kind of make a list of all these outcomes that you want to experience, that you want to see, that you want to feel, that's really important. How do you want to feel when you can imagine success for yourself? That way is out of your head and on paper. And that itself sometimes can be quite a calming uh, practice to do as well. Now that you've identified specific outcomes that you want for your success in the new year, you wanna start honoring your dreams and your goals by doing something about them. Action really helps us understand, well, it helps our brains and our hearts understand that this is something that we really want and that it is really possible for us because action solidifies the thought. It brings it to life. It's, it's no longer an idea when you act on it. So start acting on bite-sized action. And you've probably heard about uh, me saying this in, our, in my video because I want you to be able to build up courage to do the bigger action. But today where you stand, you can do kind of what I call low hanging uh, bite sized action, right? That you can do right away that's feasible to do and easy for you to do to start kind of that momentum rolling to get shit done, right? So I know you've got tons of ideas, you've got tons of thoughts and you started putting them on paper. Sometimes they link, sometimes they don't seem like they link and that's okay. But there has been some certain questions in your head that's been pressing in the back of your mind. You know, that thing that doesn't allow you to go to sleep. Um, and maybe some of these things are actually quite simple. It could be just about, you know what, I wish I could talk to someone that has quit their job and started a business they love, or I've been watching this person on the internet that seems really successful, or, or they're in transition and being very successful. I wish I could have a chat with them to kind of pick their brain on what's going on in their world. Well, maybe that's it. That is the one thing that you want to find out is just talking to someone about that experience so that they give you the courage uh, to start believing that this life can be for you too. So a bite-sized action around that one could be just literally reaching out to that person, talking to someone in your inner circle that you trust that is living a life that you want to emulate or have dreamt about and simply just picking up the phone or emailing them and to start reaching out to get the answers that you need. That is a bite-sized uh, action for yourself to start. Another thing that you want to start doing to get closer to your goals and be successful to get to your goals is to start to look at all the actions that you're doing and behaving. How are you behaving in your daily life and in your weekly life? What I would love for you to do is spend a week and really start to track what you're doing repeatedly, whether it's tasks that you do, people that you're spending time with, or repeated patterns in your behaviors that keeps kind of showing up right in that seven days. And keep a journal with you so you can get this done. And the idea 
idea is not to be hard on yourself when you're doing this, but just to realize and notice. Be aware of what is actually happening in your life. Because what we want to find out is, are you doing the daily things and the weekly things and the monthly things that are getting you closer to your goals or further away from it? Right. So I like to start with people I'm hanging out with because I know uh, if you're like me, I'm influenced a lot by people I'm hanging out with. So I need to almost like take inventory of the people and my friends that I'm hanging out with. I love them. But if my time with them isn't spent really growing myself personally or getting me closer to developing uh, what I need in my mindset or in my skill sets to do the things that I want to do in my life. Well, it's not about cutting people off. It's about limiting your time. Right. So if you're hanging out with people that are sucking the energy out of you, you need to stop doing that, limit your time and start finding people that are more similar, that are going down that path that you want to go to and start hanging out with them a bit more, right? And if you don't have anyone around you physically, go online, go on some Facebook groups, right? Join mine called The Unconventionalist on Facebook. You'll find a lot of like-minded people that are wanting to craft up uh, their own path for their life and be with those people. Start to get inspired, motivated and also gaining support from these people, right? Same thing with what you're doing in your spare time. You know, if you're watching TV all the time or, um, you know, what I used to do a lot before is scrolling, you know, mindlessly scrolling online and checking out people's businesses and going, oh, that person did that. I don't know if I can do it. Instead of doing that, you know, why don't you just try to figure out what would people pay me for today? Forget everybody else for a minute. What would people pay me for right now that would be valuable? for them to pay me so that I can maybe start a business around that or even just start experimenting with contracting out my skills. These are kind of doable things that you can start doing and then that way you can be filling your time with things that are meaningful and fulfilling and satisfying and you're getting closer to the goals that you've set up for yourself. The last and final but probably most important thing that you need to remember is getting humble and changing the way that you perceive your world and yourself until you get to what you want, right? Because we only know what we know in to today in who we are and what, what we know in our knowledge. So be easy on yourself as you navigate this path of the unknown, uh, because that's all that it is. It is just the unknown. It doesn't mean that you'll never know what to do, but it is that, um, you know, you are equipped with certain skills and knowledge for now. And there's this kind of haziness and that's OK. That's kind of part of the fun. So you need to 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 in a way just change your attitude to look at it as if everything is an experiment. You're kind of this mad scientist in your lab of life and you're able to screw up and fuck up a little bit when you mix the wrong concoction. It's OK. That's part of the experiment. But but gain this new question every time you quote unquote fuck up is what can I learn from this? what quote unquote mistake um, and use it to know something more that I didn't know yesterday before I fucked up. <laughs> right. So all of a sudden this fuck up is kind of in a way um, beneficial because you do know something that you didn't know before you had the fuck up and that's OK. So now it's a benefit. Right. So being able to kind of change your languaging around being softer to yourself, being more loving to yourself as you learn new things will really help you feel uh, that you're you're able to play that you're able to make mistakes and it'll make the journey a little bit more comfortable for you. There you have it, my quick tips on how to visualize success for yourself for the new year. And I want to also invite you to go to my blog page, which will I'll have the link here in the video uh, to, to get your hands on the free workbook that I've created just for you to help plan out your goals for the new year and create the action that you need to make it all happen for you. OK, that's going to help you jumpstart how to kind of get all your ideas in your head on paper, figure out the bite sized action to honor right that that thing that you really really want and really keep yourself motivated inspired and your eyes on the prize as you start the new year for your success if you've enjoyed this video uh, these videos please subscribe to my channel uh, where i'll be releasing videos a few times a month uh, and of course don't forget to um, also go onto my website screwthecubicle.com where i share a lot of free tools and resources uh, to help you figure out what you're meant and designed to do with your life besides being in a cubicle and how would you go about figuring out your best strengths and skills to make it all happen for yourself i hope you enjoyed this episode and see you soon in the next one Hey, thank you so very much for watching Screw the Cubicle TV and don't forget to subscribe below to get all the latest cubicle crashing content on how to quit your nine to five and create a life and business on your own terms.